Today we will look at the so-called temperature compensated Zener diodes, namely this circuit here is very typical for old school linear power supplies. Furthermore we will compare the positive temperature coefficient of a Zener diode with the negative temperature coefficient of a traditional silicon diode. Welcome to Donkey Learning IT where Dr. Donkey will teach you various topics in IT and applied electronics. Let's go! In the previous video in the switch mode power supply repair series we have introduced this circuit here which is then consisting of a power transistor, a Zener diode and a series resistor. We have then also looked at the voltage output characteristics of this circuit here. We have concluded that the Zener diode alone is providing a relatively stable output voltage. However when we are combining it with a power transistor then the output voltage will be always systematically about 0.7 volt lower than the Zener voltage. Furthermore we have mentioned that even the Zener voltage will have an upward drift when we are changing the input voltage and this drift here is mainly due to the effect of the temperature upon the Zener voltage. The question what we wanna tackle today is the following. Can we do some minimal changes to this circuit here such that the output voltage will stay then close to this 3.8 volt Zener voltage. Also we wanna improve this circuit in a way that it is then more stable when it comes to the effect of the temperature. In the previous video we have started out with this very simple circuit and we have then changed the input voltage. Today we gonna use the same circuit however we will not change the input voltage so the input voltage will stay at the fixed value of 10 volt DC. Instead of adjusting the input voltage today we will just play with the temperature of the Zener diode and we will see how does this affect the output voltage as a function of the temperature. To demonstrate the effect of the temperature upon the Zener voltage here I have a 6.6 volt Zener diode in this prototyping board. I'm feeding it with 10 volt DC and as you see it is then providing us about 6.7 almost 6.6 .6 volt. Our Zener diode is just producing the output voltage unsuspectingly. It is still young, innocent and it is just doing its thing. And damn, 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 suddenly a donkey comes along randomly with a huge massive heat gun and now let us see what happens with this Zener diode. In particular what happens with the output voltage. I have to point out that I will not be changing the input voltage that is an important parameter so the input voltage will stay fixed. However we have to check what will happen with the output voltage after I'm starting to heat up this Zener diode. At room temperature the Zener voltage is 6.72 volt and now this unsuspecting diode will then be slowly cooked by some torturous Dr. Donkey. As you can see the Zener voltage is rising. So we could see that just by heating the Zener diode we were able to then change the output voltage up to a value of about 6.9 volt which is really a large change compared to the original 6.7 volt and as the diode is cooling down slowly then it is coming down in voltage back to this 6.7 volt. For this circuit here with the Zener diode we found a so called positive thermal coefficient. A positive thermal coefficient means that the Zener voltage will then slightly increase when we are increasing the temperature. So when the temperature is going up meaning that the change is positive then also the Zener voltage will go up. The shape of this curve will depend on the Zener diode which you are using in your circuit. This means that you will have to then check out the data sheet of the given Zener diode. Another thing which I have to point out to you is the following. This behavior that the Zener voltage increases as a function of temperature is not necessarily true for every Zener diode. In fact Zener diodes which are made for Zener voltages below 5 volt tend to have a negative thermal coefficient. I will show you in a moment what a negative thermal coefficient means. Nevertheless the conclusion is that whenever you wanna buy so called thermally compensated Zener diodes 
Most of the time you are looking for Zener diodes which have a Zener voltage above 6 volt. And that is also the reason why I am using a 6.6 volt Zener diode here. After we have looked at the behavior of the Zener diode, let us now look what happens when we have a silicon diode which is forward biased in a very similar circuit here and we are doing the same thing. We are feeding in 10 volt DC into the input. We have then the series resistor. Then the current is flowing through here through the silicon diode and we are measuring here this voltage drop between the anode and the cathode of the silicon diode. And we will check how does this voltage change as a function of the temperature. Now we have put in a traditional silicon diode which is then forward biased in series with the resistor. There is about 0.79 volt which is then dropping on the forward bios silicon diode at room temperature. As usual let us then hit it with the heat gun and let us see now in this case what happens with this voltage here. Just to repeat we start out at 0.79 then we gonna heat it up. As you can see in the case of a silicon diode when we heat up the diode then the forward voltage actually drops down. If we would be plotting this forward bios voltage on a standard silicon diode as a function of the temperature then we would obtain a plot somewhat similar to this where we can see that the forward voltage is then dropping as a function of the temperature as we have seen in the previous experiment. Therefore in the case of a silicon diode we will say that the silicon diode forward voltage will have a negative thermal coefficient. And that is because when the temperature increases the forward bios voltage decreases. So how could then we take advantage of the fact that the standard silicon diode when it is heated up it has a negative thermal coefficient when it comes to the forward bios voltage and this coefficient is give or take about 2 millivolt per Celsius which means that if we increase the temperature of the silicon diode then the forward bios drop voltage will then decrease with about 2 millivolt. In contrast to the standard silicon diode we have seen that in the case of Zener diodes when the Zener voltage is above 6 volt when we are heating up the Zener diode then the Zener voltage is actually increasing with about 3 millivolt per Celsius. That is just a rough number it will really strongly depend on the given Zener diode. Nevertheless for the Zener diode we found a positive thermal coefficient whereas for the silicon diode we found a negative thermal coefficient. So let us think about what happens when we are putting a Zener diode in series into a circuit. Here there will be a current flowing from the input voltage through this current limiting resistor. Then the current will flow through the Zener diode and of course the same amount of current is flowing through also the silicon diode. Across the silicon diode we will have this forward bios drop of about 0.7 to 0.9 volt depending on the temperature. Whereas on the Zener diode we will then have the Zener voltage. We know that this Zener voltage will increase with the temperature. Whereas for the silicon diode we know that the forward voltage will decrease with the temperature. Therefore it is a good idea to put a Zener diode in series with a standard silicon diode since the positive thermal coefficient of the Zener diode will then be compensated by the negative thermal coefficient of the silicon diode. Therefore if you are repairing old school power supplies which have been designed between the 80s and the 90s you will often find this type of solution which I must admit when I was only about 15 years old I never understood why there is a Zener diode in series with the silicon diode. So I hope if there is a 15 year old young version of me watching this video now he knows what is going on. You may have asked already what happens with the output voltage what we are measuring across the Zener diode combined with the silicon diode. Considering that the Zener diode will make the Zener voltage and the silicon diode has just this forward drop voltage 
The output voltage will be simply the combination of the Zener diode voltage plus this 0.7 volt forward voltage on the silicon diode. So let us now see what happens when we put in this Zener diode in series with the traditional silicon diode and we use this in combination with our power transistor where the power transistor is then operating with the emitter follower configuration. Here we have then this circuit built up on the prototyping board where we have a 3.8 volt rated Zener diode put in series with the standard silicon diode. As you see the output voltage is now getting really close to the Zener diode voltage. It is almost 3.8 volt and the input voltage is 10 volt. As usual I will then change the input voltage in the range of 10 to 15 volt with 1 volt increments and then we will see how does the output voltage changes as a function of the input voltage. On this figure I am showing then the results of the three different measurements namely the black curve here is then showing the Zener voltage without the power transistor. The red curve here is the one which we have seen in the previous video. So this is always about 0.7 volt lower than the Zener output voltage. And the blue curve here is then the result from today's video where we are using the power transistor in combination with our thermally compensated Zener diode. We can clearly notice that now the output voltage is rather similar with our Zener voltage reference here shown with the black curve and that is because we are no longer losing this 0.7 volt and I will explain why that is the case. In the previous video we have covered that the output voltage on the emitter follower side will be about 0.7 volt lower compared to the reference voltage. And that is because we are losing about 0.7 volt when it comes to the base emitter junction. However, please recall that when it comes to the thermally compensated Zener diode, we are now raising this voltage exactly with about 0.7 volt since we have here this silicon diode in series with the Zener diode. Due to this silicon diode practically we are gaining in reference voltage plus 0.7 volt then we are losing about 0.7 volt when it comes to the base emitter junction. So at the end of the day the output voltage here will be then rather similar to the Zener voltage. Still when we are looking at the maximum deviation of the output voltage when we are increasing the input voltage from 10 volt and then we go up to 15 volt input voltage we can clearly see that this maximum deviation here is still about 7 to 6 percent which is almost double that of a traditional Zener diode. This tells us that by adding the silicon diode we improve the thermal stability however the maximum deviation here will be still quite bad. To improve the voltage output stability we will need to then introduce the error amplifier in combination with a feedback loop and these two things will be then the topic of the follow up video in this series. Many thanks for watching. I hope to see you in another video.